What about if I hire two additional, 200 additional workers, and in exchange, you're gonna give me subsidies on cotton, water, electricity, and additional production inputs? Is that possible? You are the Chinese government. Definitely yes, they want to create more jobs and I want to create more money. Now, let's say $100 dollars a month times 200 new jobs, how much is that on a monthly basis? Well, including what the government Everything. is gonna charge? $100 dollars, uh, per month per job and 200 jobs. Well, but what about the ter what their cut and, and the, the subsidies? Put it in, all oh no, the subsidies for me. That's for me, I am Bill. So for instance, do I, how much do I need to pay on a monthly basis? 200 one ha times 100, so $20,000 a month. Piece of cake is half the cost of my son's car. Actually, you're like one-fifth. <laughs> anyway, so I hire 200 additional workers, and you give me subsidies on electricity and so on and so forth. I just went from 4% return on investment, Barbara, Roughly speaking, 27% return on investment. They just cut the deal. Can I get more money? <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is about reframing the problem instead of saying I have a culture or I have. I went from principle based negotiation to interest based negotiation. Because I'm the company owner, I can do that. Am I communicating this? If you go there with the mentality of the company owner, you are able to modify and frame the situation or the problematic in a way that it is relevant for the interest of both parties. Make sense? Piece of cake. Now the problem is, Ogus, Oguzan, what do I do with 200 additional workers? They're gonna be playing, singing, kicking around. What do I do with them? Just empower them, be a good leader, give them now go from 30,000 meters to one meter. You are totally right, but come here. This session has three major, I'm wrapping up, three major components. The first component was presented by Dr. Diamond, and the idea was at the level of macroeconomic variables, we can talk about politics, economics, GDP, exchange rates, and in fact, we're gonna go into that into more detail. And it is important to have the framework and the boundaries related to introduction to global business. Then we went from the macro level to the more relevant, personally speaking, like what do I do with my pension fund gave, uh, given this information on GDP, debt, exchange rates, and all, how do I maximize my return on investment and making sure that I have the proper cash flow to live on a, every day until I am 105, like a, that was Alisa's case. We also <coughs> were able to define and design the terms of engagement for our, you know, we needed to have some grounds, some basic rules in order to have a really <coughs> functional and harmonious way of interacting or learning. In fact, most of the, most of the methodology was andragogic, it was not pedagogic. Pedagogy is for children, andragogy is for grown-ups, people like you. People who have cognitive repertoires of behaviors. Um, and we also moved away from teaching and we went into learning. I never provided responses. I, never, I was never trying to deposit knowledge into your heads. Let us have a conversation for learning and eventually a conversation for action. I was also trying to make sure that every single person in the room was able to participate and say something, and you heard me like 10 times, let me build upon your idea. As opposed to saying this is wrong, this is good, let me build upon them, and then we decide how we are doing. Obviously, there is always a position, but in grown-up education, it is important to include the left side with the right hand side and have what we, what we call whole brain learning. And the third part was application. Through a particular case that includes business, strategy, financial issues, cost, quality, and the cultural dimensions such as expatriate and so on. Any final remarks? It was great to work and learn with all of you. Thank you very much.
University of San Diego.